Hi, this is Alex from Groovy Entertainment. Today we got another record to play for you. Today's record is Your Good Health. So let's get started. Your Good Health. Long ago, there lived a king who was so powerful that whenever he sneezed, everyone in the entire country had to say, Do your good, good health! health. Your good health. Yes. Everyone said it except the shepherd with staring eyes. He would not say it, no matter how often or how loud the king sneezed. Well, the king heard of this, and he was very angry. Why, if he gets away with not saying it, soon other people will try. Why, in a few years I could sneeze, and only a thousand people would say, to your health. A fine state of affairs that would be. Soldiers, go get this shepherd and bring him before me, and fetch me my snuff. <laughs> I feel like sneezing. The shepherd was brought to the court and stood before the throne, where the king sat looking very grand and powerful. But however grand and powerful he might look, the shepherd did not seem in the least afraid of him. As king, I command you, say it once. Go ahead, say it. To my good health. I want to hear it. Go ahead. To my good health. No, no, no. To mine. To mine, rascal. Bum. <laughs> to mine. To mine, no. your majesty. No, 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 but, but to mine. To my own. <laughs> to my own. Yes. No, no. To my own. Oh, I'm <laughs> so upsetting. The king beat his chest with so much in a rage. Well, yeah. To mine. To mine, of course. To my own. Gently tapped his chest. The king was then full of fury and did not know what to do when the Lord Chamberlain interfered. Uh, uh, say it once, my good fellow, say it this very moment. Uh, go ahead, say it. To your health, your majesty. Shepherd, if you don't say this, you will lose your life. No, I won't say it until I have the princess for my wife. Now, the princess was seated on a little throne beside the king and her father, and she looked more sweet and lovely than any princess in the world. The shepherd thought she looked like a little golden dove. When she heard what the shepherd said, she could not help laughing, but there was no denying that this young shepherd with these staring eyes pleased her very much. Indeed, he looked better to her than any king's son she had ever seen. But the king was not as pleasant as his daughter. Throw this shepherd into the white bear's pit. Oh, no! So the guards took him away and pushed him into the pit with the white bear, who had had nothing to eat for two days and was very, very hungry. The door of the pit was hardly shut when the bear rushed at the shepherd. When it saw his eyes, it was so frightened that it was ready to eat the wall. It shied away into a corner and gazed at him from there, and in spite of it being so hungry, did not dare touch him, but nibbled its own claws from sheer hunger. The shepherd knew that once he took his eyes from the beast, he was a dead man, and in order to keep himself awake, he made up songs and sang them. And so the night went on and on, until it was dawn. The next morning, the Lord Chamberlain came to see the shepherd's well-picked bones and was surprised to find him alive and well. He brought him to the king, who fell into a furious fit. What, what, well, have you learned what it is to be very near death? And now will you say, to my good health? We am not afraid of ten deaths. For you'll only say it, I can have the princess for my wife. <laughs> then go to your death, Demir. Throw him into the den of the wild boars. Now the wild boars had not been fed in a week. And when the shepherd was pushed into their den, they rushed at him to tear him to pieces. But the shepherd took a little flute out of the sleeve of his jacket and began to play a merry tune. 
on which the wild boars first of all shrank shyly away, and then stood up on their hind legs and danced madly. The shepherd would have given most anything to be able to laugh. They looked so ridiculous, but he dared not stop playing, for he knew quite well that the moment he stopped, they would leap upon him and tear him to shreds. His eyes were of little use to him there, for he could not have stared ten wild boars in the face all at once, so he kept on playing, and the wild boars danced quite slowly, as if in a ballroom dance. And then by degrees, he played faster and faster until they could hardly twist and turn and howl fast enough and ended by all falling and tripping over each other and landing in a heap completely exhausted and much out of breath. Then the shepherd was able to laugh and he laughed so long and so loud that when the Lord Chamberlain came early in the morning expecting not to find even his bones, the tears were still running down the shepherd's face and these were tears of laughter, let me tell you. As soon as the king was dressed and combed, the shepherd was once again brought before him. Well, he was more angry than ever to learn that the wild boars had not torn the shepherd to shreds. Well, now, have you learned what it feels like to be near to ten deaths? So now say, to my good health. But the shepherd was having none of it. We do not fear a hundred deaths, sire. No, I will only utter those words if I may have the princess for my wife. Then go to a hundred deaths. Throw him in the deep fort with the sides. So the guards dragged him away to a dark dungeon, in the middle of which was a deep well with sharp sides and curved knives all around him. At the bottom of this horrible well was a little light by which a guard could see if anyone thrown in had fallen to the bottom. When the shepherd was taken to the dungeon, he begged the guards to leave him alone for a little while, just a few minutes, that he might look down into the fearsome pit of sides and perhaps make up his mind to say, to your good health, to the king. So the guards left him alone and went off to talk among themselves about this shepherd who would not give in to the king. <laughs> What's to talk about? The guy's crazy. The king could do worse than sneeze. And I'd still say, to your health, because I'd really be attending to my health. <laughs> now, 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 you don't understand. It's the principle of the thing. I understand see, he's all right. He's up for what he believes I in. I understand all right. He's, he's got just, to do uh, it. Look after number one, that's what I always well, say. Well, I know, but what about good old number seven? Oh, I don't, I don't care about old number seven. Number one for You me. don't care about me? I would me. say to your health any day for his majesty. Silly old... Stop it. Meanwhile, their conversation gave the shepherd enough time to place his long stick against the wall and put his hat on top. He also hung his knapsack up inside the cloak so that it might look like there was somebody in it, namely himself. When this was done, he called to the guards and said he had thought it over and he still couldn't do as the king wished. The guards entered and threw the hat and cloak and knapsack and stick down into the deep well together and watched to see how they covered the light at the bottom of the well. Then they left, thinking that now the shepherd was dead. Oh, poor guy. Didn't have a chance. Most stubborn man I ever met. Uh, me too. Never saw another like him. The shepherd had hidden himself in a dark corner and was chuckling to himself all the time. Quite early, an hour or two before dawn, the Lord Chamberlain entered, carrying a lamp to guide his way. <coughs> dark, nasty place, probably full of spiders with awful hairy legs. Oh, ah, what was that? Something moved. <coughs> Easy now, Lord Chamberlain. It's just me. Oh, oh, what a start you gave me. Oh, don't ever do that again. Oh, the king will be beside himself with anger. Why, he won't know what to do. I'm sure he'll think of something. Kings always do. Well, when the king saw the shepherd, he jumped up and down and wept like a child in a tantrum. <laughs> Gosh. Oh, no, I, I just... no, no, king. No, king. Take it 
it's so hard. <laughs> you mean, uh, now that you've been near a hundred deaths, you will say, you will say, you will say to your good health. Thus, as soon as you make the princess my wife. <gasps> uh, well, uh, perhaps I'm going about this the wrong way. Perhaps you will say it for less than the princess. Then the king ordered the state coach to be gotten ready, and he made the shepherd get in with him and sit beside him. And then he issued his next order. Driver, go to the silver wood, the most beautiful forest in the land. When they had arrived at the wood, the king smiled triumphantly. Shepherd, do you see this silver wood? You like it, right? Well, if you say to my good help, I will give it to you. The shepherd turned colors. Such was his longing for this beautiful place to be his own. But he remained stubborn. Not until you say the princess is my wife will I say the words you long to hear. The king was quite upset. He drove further off until they came to a fantastic castle, all of gold and shining in the cold morning light. Do you see this golden castle? You could even see it with your eyes closed, it's so bright. Well, I will give you it too, so you would have the silver wood and the castle, if only you will say those four little words to me. Well, the shepherd's eyes were filled with wonder, and he felt a yearning down to his heart. For it was something for a poor shepherd to own a silver wood and a golden castle. But he remembered what he was really after. Mm -hmm. Nope. No. We will not say it until the princess is mine forever. Well, the king hunkered in one corner and cried and carried on like a small maid. He had just enough self-control left to order that they drive to the diamond pond. When they arrived, the shepherd had to close his eyes. The pond dazzled him so. He listened to the king make his offer. Well, you see, the pond here is all diamond shiny. You know what the fortune you know, It's yours, you know. Do you know the whole rest of it? Just say the words. Come on, say them. No! The princess for the words, and that is that. And the king saw that that indeed was that. He might as well give in. Well, 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 I, no, I, I don't really care, I mean, <laughs> really. <laughs> None of this means much to me. You ought to marry my daughter, you ought to marry her. Fine, that's nice, nice, yes. We'll have a cater affair. With plenty of musicians, feasting and fun. A party, yes, I haven't had a party in years. It's a very good idea, actually. Then, of course, though it's only a trifle and really nothing important, you'll say to your good old father-in-law, to your good health, Daddy. <laughs> Boy, of course I'll say it. What makes you think I wouldn't? Once I had the princess, boy, I should be glad to say it then. Oh, I... Jeremy. When the king heard his words, he was so delighted that he arranged for them to be married the next day. He made it known throughout his kingdom that this would be a time of great rejoicing and that everyone was invited. And so they all came, for everyone was happy that the princess who had rejected a hundred king's sons had fallen in love with a staring-eyed shepherd. There was such a wedding celebration as ever had been seen, with dancing, drinking, and merrymaking, till people fell over from pleasure. The greatest pleasure was in the king's palace, where a crowd of people sat at the table, eating and drinking and laughing and waiting for the king to sneeze. Finally, when the groom's man, according to custom, served a great boar's head on a big dish, placing it in front of the king so he might carve it, the savory smell of the meat was so strong that the king began to sneeze with all his might. <laughs> to your very good elf. To your very good elf, your majesty. <laughs> why, why, dear shepherd. Dear shepherd, I mean, such.
So that was your good health. So please like, subscribe, share, and comment, and have a groovy day. We'll have another video coming out real soon.